Hi there, today on Typical Books, we're gonna be talking about some new releases for July. And August, probably, and maybe not too far beyond there. But first, we just had Canada Day yesterday, so happy Canada Day, belated to all my Canadian friends, and a happy upcoming uh, 4th of July. I believe that's Independence Day in the US, and whatever other holidays you may have. We're kind of lucky having a sort of bilateral household here where we celebrate both Canadian and American holidays to the best of our ability. Although we do get the Canadian version of these holidays off first and foremost, we still kind of do what we can to stretch out the celebration for the American holidays, like this particular one, which is some sort of pride, national pride sort of day, and Thanksgiving, which happens on different days. Now, you know, Canadian Thanksgiving happens first and then American Thanksgiving later. So I finally started reading Haunted. If you see my Instagram, you notice that I posted some pictures. I'm already impressed. I was impressed before I even started reading words. And I'm uh, three or four chapters in and I really enjoy that book. So I'll be doing that next. And at the end of this video, talking about a few more of the exciting things that are going on around here. But for now, without delay, some new releases from Horror Writers Association authors. So. We got quite a few. I was feeling cute, so I thought I'd check the bucket and oh my God, it was overflowing. So here we are with a few new releases. Really cool art again all around. It's getting cooler every month, it seems. And these are not in particular order, not even order by date. The database is just cruel. All the Dead Men. This is an Alexander Smith book two by Eric Ninali. And I really enjoyed the typography and the layout of this particular thing. And maybe I'm just a coffin fan. So Alexander must confront the church of Our Lady Perpetual Death and deal with the unexpected threat of Anna's grandsire, an old and powerful vampire who has consumed his own soul. The monster wants nothing more than possess the only love Alexander has left in the world. Do love me some vampire fiction. Black Stars Above by Lonnie Needler. It's 1887. A young fur trapper flees her over bearing family only to get lost in a dreamlike winter wilderness that harbors a cosmic threat. A chance at freedom comes in the form of a parcel that needs a delivering to a nameless town north of the wilderness. I like that already. I hope that it happens in the winter. Grotesque Monster Stories by Lee Murray. This comes from Things in the Well, Australia, and I'm just going to backtrack here. The previous one was from Vault Comics, Black Stars Above, and All the Dead Men came from Twisted Publishing, Haverhill House in Print. Grotesque Monster Stories debut short story collection from three-time Bram Stoker Award nominee Lee Murray, featuring 11 uncanny tales of automatons, zombies, golems, dragons, and it doesn't say if it's illustrated, but hey, that's cool. Grotesque Monster Stories. Jennifer Strange, this is book one of a series by Kat Scully. This comes from Haverhill House as well, and it's YAP Books is the imprint there. Savannah, Georgia is one of the most haunted places in the United States. I would vote that Pennsylvania, by and large, the whole state is haunted, but hey. In fact, Jennifer Strange has become all too aware of its haunting since moving here to live with her sister after their father's disappearance. Ghosts love her. They haunt her and everyone around her. Now they seem to want her to do something for them. Just what, she's not sure, but she better figure it out before they force her to join them. Okay, and from Severed Press, we have On Quiet Earth by Chris Kelly. Caught unaware by the risen dead, Laurel Chambers discovers a shocking capacity for violence. Unsettled by the brutality of his instincts, his psyche peels apart as he contends for survival in a savage new world. Adrift in a backwards world, seeking reconciliation with the remains of his family, Chambers must come to terms with the violence in his heart before his mental state completely dissolves into the simmering rage that lay hidden in his previous life. Not really sure what that's about, but it sounds like it would be an exciting ride. This comes up from Dark Ink Books, Shadowy Natures, Stories of Psychological Horror. I'm already sold on just the title. Very plain title, but haha, <laughs> I like psychological horror. This is edited by Rebecca Rowland. Now it comes up with 21 stories of serial killers and sociopaths. And Shadowy Natures leads fans of psychological horror down dark and treacherous roads. Featuring never before released fiction from various authors. This next one comes out from Vault Comics. It's called The Plot, written by Michael Morrissey and Tim Daniel, with art by Joshua Hickson. Colors Jordan Boyd, letters Jim Campbell, editor Adrian Wassel, or Vessel, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. 
So yeah, this is the first four issues of this comic, the plot, and it's collected into one graphic novel, and the cover is just fantastic looking. In order to receive, you first must give. When Chase Blaine's estranged brother and sister-in-law are murdered, he becomes guardian to Mackenzie and Zach, the niece and nephew he hardly knows. Chase moves his newly formed family to his ancestral home in Cape Augusta, which overlooks a deep black bog land teeming with family secrets. Yeah, I'm already enjoying that. The cover of this made me look twice. This is out by Black Bedsheet or Diverse Media Books. It's from Rochelle Dillon, who interviewed me at one point, interestingly enough, and it's called The Stain. I thought the, co the cover of this looks fun. I mean, it looks, it makes me want to read it. An ancient stain saturating a plot of Western Pennsylvania land wraps its evil shadowy claws into a new family. In the dark and unfamiliar depths of the basement, it lurks. It desires to manipulate a family into destructive chaos as it has countless times past and as far back as there were settlers on this plot of land. I told you Pennsylvania is haunted by the stain. Yeah, okay. I'm excited for the stain. Brianna Morgan's new book, Unboxed. Greg Zipper is a successful paranormal vlogger who plans to hit 1 million subscribers by filming a dark web mystery box unboxing. He gets much more than he bargained for and learns the value of his loved ones in the real world rather than basing his self-esteem on his so-called fans. I like the dark web unboxing idea. We've seen that played out in short form and video if you click on that sort of stuff. Um, but to see it in a book form, that's kind of interesting. Lisa Morton and Leslie Klinger have put out Weird Women, classic supernatural fiction by groundbreaking female writers. This comes from Pegasus Books. And this is dated from 1852 to 1923. So if you're looking for real classics, weird fiction by female writers, this is your number one addition to your bookshelf. Some of the finest tales of terror by authors as legendary as Louisa May Alcott, Frances Hodgson Burnett, and Charlotte Gilman Perkins, alongside works of writers who are the best sellers and critical favorites of their time, Marie Corelli, Ellen Glasgow, Charlotte Riddle, and lesser known authors who are deserving of contemporary recognition. I really am looking forward to this and I do like the female take on the weird pre-industrialization. It's a whole different world of women that I deeply appreciate, that I love seeing in fiction. And another addition to the weird, Weird War 3, edited by Sean Patrick Hazlitt, and a host of authors. Now, tales of the war that might have been. What if the United States had gone to war with the Soviet Union? What if the Soviets and Americans had struggled for dominion across parallel dimensions or the surface of the moon? I incidentally did indeed have a great grandmother that did not believe that the moon landing had happened and it was a hoax. Come closer and peer through the glass darkly and discover the horrifying alternative versions of World War III from some of today's greatest minds in science fiction, fantasy, and horror. So if you're into alternative history and SFFH, then yeah, that sounds like super fun. And kind of timely in a way. I mean, if we don't have enough mm, bad news bears and destructive tendencies right now, then might as well add to it in a fictional realm. And maybe not horror, one more new release, Just Us Cops is a comic put out by Thomas Nichols. You can find him at TN Comedy. He is an American comedian and he was a fan of our show, or is a fan of our show, uh, Dead Air, with me and Wes Dead Air Knife, and I'm in turn a fan of his podcast, Dude, How Did You Not See This?, which both horror movie podcasts, right? So we have that common bond, and he has put out this comic that I've followed since the beginning of it, and there was a little bit of touch and go there with issue four coming out or not, you know, question mark, but issue three was super fun, and but I think he slips horror in there. Like he is a horror fan. He's also a hot sauce fan and a fun gummy candy fan. But slipping a little bit of horror into something as comical as a buddy cop comedy surrealist fiction tale. Yeah. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, pick up Just Us Cops. Volume 3 is out now. And he's been doing some specials and chit chats online about that. So hop on that for sure. Check out teamcomedy.net for that. And as far as some of the other fun stuff happening around here, I'm sort of wearing my Wicked Library shirt for a reason. It's uh, coming up, so tune in to some of the last stuff. There was a Sarah Tantlinger story that was very, very well done. This whole season has just been unbelievable, especially because they're operating on sort of a Titan crew right now, thanks to 
the way the world has been this year. So this season has just been hitting it out of the park. I think that it owes a lot to the years of quality and preparation and experience that the librarian and everyone involved has bringing to the show. So when they're working, you know, with high tension and low cooperation, perhaps, they are really pulling together an amazing fiction podcast, an award-winning fiction podcast. The only two podcast shirts I own, The Wicked Library and This Is Horror. Wicked Library won a This Is Horror award, go figure. But yeah, so this is a, a teaser for some upcoming Wicked Library goodness that you could perhaps see from me. We'll see. That's the one thing I do like working with the Wicked Library, and I do have quite a few other stories uh, that you can find that I've done for the Wicked Library. And in, Aside from just submitting a story and seeing it come to fruition, it's really a collaborative effort and I love collaborating with people. Then I do it so rarely. I mean, I create these videos very alone and I had a chance this weekend to create a little video with my husband. He has a third EP coming out under his uh, musical project name Anorex and that was super fun. So that'll be coming up and I'm only teasing it a little bit here in that a, he does the music for my show. I use his uh, movie soundtrack, Ingredients, for this show. But we created a teaser for his upcoming EP and it was super fun to do. And it was so much fun and so easy and quick to like work with somebody to do something. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to be working with somebody again. If you hadn't tuned in before to mine and Amy Jane Vospers, or the Glamour Ghoul, as she is known, we had a very long conversation about horror. and. You can find it here on my channel, but hey, we're doing another one. So if you have any input or questions for me and Amy in the meantime, before we sit down to record, we're going to sit down in about five minutes and chit chat about what we're going to do and just visit and hang out like we normally do. But yeah, so I get to look forward to that sort of collaborative effect. And another somewhat collaboration that I got to be part of and Another really awesome woman out there in horror is Merz from Harpies in the Trees. She created the most adorable photo edit of mine I've ever seen. Oh my. She's been doing these amazing art photos up on her Instagram. So definitely check that out. Go on over to Harpies in the Trees. Check out her booktube videos first and foremost because she's a hero of mine and has a fantastic taste in horror and is extremely skilled in photo editing and video production. Definitely check out some of the horror fiction. If you're a fan of the Wicked Library and things like that, then you might like Mer's channel because she does some readings from time to time. So coming up will be a review of James Herbert's Haunted, which I'm enjoying very much, and a belated haul video of some sort for sure. Until then, if there's anything on this list that really piques your interest, let me know in the comments, or if there's something you're reading that you think I ought to pick up, definitely let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much and have an ooky spooky day.